Hi, I'm Sophie. Hi, I'm Arshia. I'm Robin. Hi, I'm Pulkit, and I work at Tech at RBC in the strategy and research team. I am a machine learning engineer in Tech at RBC, exploring generative AI technologies to streamline processes within the bank and ultimately improve client experiences. Uh, hi, I'm Vlad, and I'm head of the quantum computing uh, efforts at RBC. I'm an intern at RBC, and I do prototyping and research engineering with up-and-coming immersive technologies. Before university, I never actually coded before in my life. My first semester in university was when I started using some of the knowledge I learned from my classes to make small games and apps, which I didn't realize at the time that it would be the start of my portfolio that would land me this job at RBC six years later. Hi, I'm Michael, and I build RBC's tech strategy by shaping our future ambitions for adopting new technologies. Hi, I'm Solai, and I contribute to the team that develops innovative software solutions using the state-of-the-art AI technologies. What's something you've been surprised to learn in your role? When I joined RBC, I thought I was joining a bank, but I really feel like I'm working in a technology company. I was surprised to learn about the innovative ways RBC is looking at generative AI technologies to improve customer experiences and drive business growth. I'm excited to be a part of a team that is pushing the boundaries of what is possible with AI and helping to shape the future of banking. How did you get into the tech field? I got into the field of quantum computing back in 2004 where I started my PhD at Carnegie Mellon in the United States. At that time, I thought quantum computing is a cool new technology that might or might not materialize. Uh, I was completely wrong. The technology materialized, so I'm very happy that I chose this career path. My educational pathway has always been driven by my curiosity to solve societal problems, creating a big impact on the community, and actually helping people around me. I chose food engineering as it gave me the skills to structure problems and then systematically solve for them. Think about learning everything from farm to fork. You know, how does milk from dairy farmers actually get transformed into the delicious ice cream that we all love? Or how is cereal made? Or how is chocolate processed in the production facilities? You know, while doing this work, I also learned more about climate change and become, became more inclined towards environmental sustainability. And Canada, being one of the leaders in this field, I moved here for my master's in sustainability from Brock University in the beautiful Niagara region in Ontario. My ma master's actually taught me a systems thinking mindset, how to approach strategic initiatives and collaborate with a wide variety of people, which I apply every day at RBC. My first actual job was a summer intern at a small company near the university I was studying at. I was working as a quality assurance intern, basically just testing other people's code. The next summer after that, I got an actual development position, um, which eventually turned into a full-time position since it was a co-op. Um, I worked there for about a year, and then I applied to RBC. And throughout all my time in university, I was always interested in the best and fastest way to get things done, especially when it came to cool stuff like 3D or game development. This mindset really taught me how to learn different softwares and programming languages quickly, but also how to prototype small solutions in a really short period of time. I think if there's anything that helped me land this job, it was probably that skill I learned you know, in the earlier parts of my career. I am someone who has always been passionate about computer science. I literally enjoy every aspect of it, right from assembling a PC, ground up, up to developing complex software solutions. Eager to expand my horizons and learn from top-tier professionals, I decided to embark on an international academic journey, and this led me to Canada, where I undertook my research master's in mathematics and computer science at the globally renowned University of Waterloo. I chose Waterloo largely because the university houses excellent professors and facilitates advanced research in AI. And I strongly believe that AI is developing at an unprecedented pace and possesses immense potential that could revolutionize several industries and businesses. Where did you go to school? What did you study and why? I'm currently a student at Western University studying a dual degree with mechatronic systems engineering and biophysics. Mechatronics is a combination of mechanical, electrical, and software engineering, and biophysics is a combo of biology, physics, and medical sciences. What made you choose your course of study? 
I wanted to learn as much about as many things as possible, really, and challenge myself as much as I could. Really, I just wanted to push myself, and I took as many opportunities to do that as I could. I actually just started out with engineering, but then I decided I wanted even more of a challenge, so I added the extra courses for biophysics. I completed my undergraduate studies in industrial engineering at the University of Toronto, which is a discipline all about designing and optimizing systems using computer science, math, and engineering. For example, how do you maximize the number of surgeries that can be performed in a hospital provided a fixed number of surgeons and operating rooms? Then I pursued a master's degree also in industrial engineering, but my research was primarily focused on deep learning. During that time, I was mainly researching on time series analysis and self-supervised learning. What made you choose your course of study? Initially, I chose industrial engineering as my field of study because I've always been excited about solving real-world problems from an engineering point of view. And I think that working in this intersection between engineering and computer science could be really interesting. As I went through my studies, I became gradually more interested in software and machine learning, which is why I pursued my master's degree in deep learning. How did that lead you to the work that you're doing today? Well, my first ever internship was working as a process analyst in a bank. It was not a programming role, but I was able to apply optimization techniques to improve process efficiency. But during that time, I realized that I miss being challenged from a technical standpoint, and that's why I decided to pursue a master's to deepen my technical understanding. During my master's, I interned at Vector Institute, which is an artificial intelligence research in institute in Toronto. It was a unique opportunity in the intersection of machine learning application and research, and I learned tremendously there. This internship was also super helpful in jumpstarting my career as a machine learning engineer and helped me obtain my current job. So after I completed my master's degree, I came right here and became a machine learning engineer. What's something about the technology that you work on that you wish more people knew about? What's a common misconception about the work that you do? A part of the technology that I wish more people, people knew about is uh, cryptography and how large-scale quantum computers will be able to um, break currently deployed cryptography. Uh, we have a threat that's active today, and we need to protect against this threat as we are speaking. Although these large-scale quantum computers that will uh, attack our cryptography are not yet available now, uh, we should protect today due to the fact that uh, Threat actors intercept our current communications and will try to decrypt it later when the time comes. One common misconception about the technology is that uh, quantum computers will be able to solve everything. That is not the case. Quantum computers will be highly specialized machines uh, that will be very good in cer for certain classes of problems, including finance, uh, but will not replace your common word processor or Excel. What was the challenge you overcame when you left school and started your career? One of the foremost challenges that I had to face when transitioning from school to my career was connected to the circumstances brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. In particular, my entire graduate program was conducted virtually, which drastically limited my ability to foster connections that could have been valuable to my career. This was especially significant for me as I fervently believe that your net worth is the network that you build. Despite these challenges, I never gave up. I maximized the usage of online platforms like LinkedIn, Glassdoor, and conducted several virtual coffee chats with industry professionals to understand the market requirement. Using these strategies, I expanded my network, sk skilled up, and ultimately secured my current goal. What's something about the technology that you work on that you wish more people knew about? What's a common misconception about the work that you do? I think when most people think of virtual reality or augmented reality, they think of those big headsets that people use to play games or go on VR chat. And as much as that is a totally valid use case for the tech, I think the most exciting part of all this work is the prospects of AR and how it could potentially change our everyday lives. Like It really could be the next evolution of your smartphone giving us the ability to remove barriers even further between us and all the information that's out there. Like, imagine not having to pull your phone out to take a photo or to get directions to go somewhere. Like, how cool is that? What's a challenging part of your job? 
A challenging part of my job is staying up to date with the latest advancements in AI technologies. Since the AI landscape is constantly evolving, I need to continuously learn and update my knowledge and skills to ensure that our implementations and solutions are using state-of-the-art technologies. This requires a lot of dedication and commitment, and it's time-consuming to have to juggle between work and continuous learning. I think one of the challenges that comes with working for a large firm like RBC, and that too in the technology team, is that one needs to continuously adapt to the rapidly changing macroeconomic climate and technology landscape. You know, one has to develop an ability to quickly and frequently pivot their work as per the late, latest market trends and to make sure that we are providing the best client experience. And I believe that is what makes the whole RBC experience very rewarding too, being able to always stay up to date and learn new things on the go. What's the best part about the work that you do? The best part of the, my role would be working with our talented innovation team as we always showcase the art of the possible by exploring and researching exciting and new technologies like generative AI or quantum computing. I also have the opportunity to work with our leaders uh, across the enterprise where I can learn, advise, and develop our tech strategy to position RBC as a global technology leader while also shaping our strategic ambitions to bring new technologies to life for our clients and our employees. You know, I agree so much with that, Mike, right? Like, for me, my favorite part about working at the bank is just the teamwork and collaboration between such a diverse range of teams and partners. And I was so surprised to see how everyone's backgrounds are so different, right? Imagine an MBA, a person with a law background, someone with astrophysics training, and a person with a psychology background are all working on the same project. And every day I learn so much from all of them, and it's incredible to see how everyone is so invested in your success. It's just fascinating to see how our technology partners, business partners, you know, our operations people, external vendors, and more come together with their own skin, skill sets and experiences to ultimately create a great banking experience for our 17 million clients and almost our 100,000 employees globally. My favorite part of my job at RBC is the opportunity to work on cutting-edge generative AI technologies. I enjoy the challenge of developing innovative, innovative solutions to complex problems and seeing the results of my work come to life. The chance to be a part of a team that is pushing the boundaries of what is possible with AI is incredibly rewarding. Those are some excellent points. The most rewarding part of my work is the opportunity to continually learn and immerse myself in new technology. The fintech industry is incredibly dynamic and fast-paced, which means there's always something new to delve into. This keeps our work challenging and stimulating. And as Sophie highlighted, it's quite exciting to build tools with people who are just as passionate about technology as we are. Um, for me, it's my team. It's really awesome to be able to work on a team of like-minded individuals who are all on the same page as each other. Um, like it goes without saying that all the tech is really cool, but the people that I get to spend my days with are the reason why I love my job so much, for sure. Mm. Um, and yeah, the amount that I kind of get to learn from them has been so beneficial to me and like my growth, and I'm just really thankful to have that opportunity. Yeah, for sure. I really resonate with that. For me, I think how talented, hardworking, and dedicated, and really nice everybody is on our team, and being challenged every day working with brand new technology, pioneering things that we've really never worked with before. It's <laughs> extremely exciting. Yeah, for sure. What would be a piece of advice you'd have for your grade nine self? To try out new things. I never really knew what career I wanted to pursue during high school or even during university. So I would tell my grade nine self to really strive to explore more of my interests and my hobbies and turn them into a career through different courses, electives, or even co-op opportunities. So. It only takes one experience to change your perspective on what you might think is out there for your future. I don't know, I mean, that resonates so much with me. You know, I believe that grade nine is such an exciting phase of one's life where the possibilities to learn and grow are just limitless, right? Like, you know, I was someone who was a very academically inclined and diligent student, you know, a straight A student. So I would have first of all suggested myself to keep working hard on the academic side because that's important. But at the same time, you know, move out of my comfort zone uh, to further embrace those new experiences, right? Even if they seem intimidating at first, that's totally natural. You know, this is the time to really experiment and just, just go for it, right? It is precisely, I believe, these very experiences 
that help to shape your um, beautiful future. Take time to get to know yourself and get involved in different activities. Spend time ref reflecting on your values, interests, and goals. This will help you make decisions that are right for you and will help you stay focused on your long-term goals. Trying different things will also help you find something you're passionate about and you might be able to find a lifelong hobby. Reflecting on my younger self, I was an extremely studious child who was always focused on academics. If I could advise my grade 9 self, it would, it would be to maintain this relentless pursuit of knowledge at the same time enjoy the journey that accompanies it. So take pleasure in learning new things that you like and cherish the process. It will all be worth it at the end. I would have to say to try and get as many different experiences as possible. I think it's less about learning the specific content as much as it is learning how to learn. Yeah. When I'm at my job, I'm learning every day. That's really the most important thing I do at work. Mm. And so I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think um, just try everything. Don't be afraid to take a step back sometimes. It's better to try something and know that you don't like it than to just fully write it off and you know, without giving it a fair shot. Like, I changed my major <laughs> like four times. <laughs> so, you know, before I ended up here and I can't be happier because at least I know I tried everything and um, this is the one that stuck. And I mean, you probably have no concrete idea on what you want to do yet and that's fine. Everything will kind of just fall into place. Just put yourself into opportunities to kind of experience as many things as possible. You know, no matter how scary it feels, You'll never know if you don't try, so.